All right, guys, what's going on? Just threw my 10 foot cast net and we're getting the day started with some mullet in my cast net. It's not too shabby. We found a bunch of bait and literally just looking for the birds. Saw a pelican diving over here. I was like, let's go check it out. So we got some nice fr fresh baits. They're a little on the big side, but maybe we can use them for cut bait or something. But that's a great sign. So we're gonna be out here looking for some bait and hopefully getting on some nice fish. Nice job, Dr. Sizzle. You know, I don't think those are that, ba that bad because those are perfect for tarpon. True. And uh, also, you know, as the summer comes, the bigger female snook are gonna come more towards the inlets. And so, you know, a, a big, you know, a slot size snook or bigger will definitely eat one of those mullets. I mean, no problem. That's a good point. Big jack, big any, I mean, any big fish will eat them. You're right. Yeah, and there's also huge jacks around right now. So, um, and that's what they're gonna be eating. So it is what it is. So I'm just putting on a jacket now because she yeah. has her, her, her nets Pro all wet. Tip. And this thing seems to be full of mullet, so we're gonna try giving it a shot. Over here in front of the little baby mangrove. Oh, no way. Oh, it's a sand perch. Nice. Hey, 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 hey. I thought for a second it might be a pompano. <laughs> but uh, by the way, guys, today's video is brought to you by Hair Club, and we just put the first fish in the boat, finally fishing after about like 45 minutes of an hour looking for bait. We got live shrimp we bought at, um, Perks bait and tackle locally here, but that's a sand perch. It's a pretty big one. They use a lot of the smaller ones for bait, like little two inch guys. But we're gonna go ahead and release him. Look at his wild we're mouth. We're gonna release him, he's totally edible. He is, you want me to keep him? You know what, what I, always have, I always have a rule of letting the first fish go. First so fish go, all we're right. letting him go, Karma. and you see his lips, how he eats on the bottom? Like he literally just sucks things off the bottom. Okay, I know Brian's gonna say that's what she said, but yeah. Let's no, go. that's what you do now. No, that's what Brian <laughs> says. Now I'm like Brian. I don't want to take a picture of that. Oh! You just ruined my why Instagram. Why did you say it now? I don't right. think you're throwing the water so Little flippantly. Little piece of shrimp. We're going to chum up the waters, throw that back in. <laughs> All right, time to get rigged up again and catch a real fish. I mean, that was a real fish, but... This is a weird bite. Ooh, Brian's hooked up. See? Okay, we got to stay in the spot for a little bit. <laughs> What's Brian got? I have a jack. Oh. Little oh, mangrove. Fishing this pole today. This is usually, this is what, typically what you're going to catch on these poles for the kids and stuff. But uh, to, but again, you're going to catch, you know, which is this is fine for the kids. Yeah. You also can catch them eating fish. So just trying this out right now. We're going to move on. Yeah, it's a it's a beautiful May day. I'm so happy. It's gorgeous springtime in Florida. Yeah, you know this is just as yeah this is just as offshore. So typically we fish offshore, and then we only fish inshore when the weather's bad offshore. Which doesn't make the weather inshore very good either. In spring. <laughs> so today we have nice weather inshore for a change and it's quite enjoyable. Yes. <laughs> like we'd love to be offshore right now, but we also take it inshore. It's gorgeous. That's what and I just said been, exactly. But it's just been unusually rough offshore for this time of year. Oh, oh my God. You suck. It's a weird Maybe bite. stop talking and start fishing. Little snappers wrap me up. All right, time to go. Yeah, there's a bunch of structure right there, very close to that pole. Brian's hooked up. Another snapper. All right, when you catch these snappers, basically they're so aggressive, nothing else can get to it first because the little snappers are hungry. Time yeah. to move. Okay. I get a net because it's a sheep. You want a net? Well, with the sheep, you do. I don't know what it is, but with the sheep, you're going to want the net. If you guys watch our grouper. videos, you'll see. What? The glider. Not a grouper. So just net them? Yeah. All right, here we go. He just puked a ton of stuff. Yeah. Holy cow. All right. All right, you get it out. I keep get the it, Keep the thing on. All right, we got a juvenile grouper. This is a, Oop. ooh, buddy. This is a, um, what are their names again? Juven Goliath. Jewfish, Goliath. Yeah. Bunch of, na bunch of names for these guys. They're protected. You're allowed to take the small ones out of the water to remove the hook. That's what we're doing. And we're going to instantly release them. No pictures. This is actually the smallest one we've caught. Yeah. In a while. You catch them a little bigger than this in short. Jesus. You get him in the water. I'm trying, babe. <laughs> so pretty. I love that they're so small. Woo! And he gone. Too bad I can't keep that grouper. I just felt his cheeks and I'm like, oh, that's delicious cheek meat in that grouper. <laughs> you got fish. Get him. Hey, right, caught a snap of all I was having my lunch. Nice job. I'm having some chickpeas and chicken for lunch because I'm fat. Just having, what's fat? Me, I'm fat. Oh, I thought you said with fat. I was like, what? 
Your, well, I'm, I'm your just, rump is fat. We didn't have a chance to make a breakfast this morning. I was busy chipping out orders for my website, but uh, ah. I got a lot of orders out anyhow. Um, so I'm eating like a bunch of protein bars and crap like that today. Protein shakes, protein bars, because I need it. I got to take it out of the cooler so it warms up. How many cookies did you have last night? <laughs> a lot. A good amount. I don't know. She wakes up in the middle of the night and pounds cookies. I do. I did it twice last night. Oh my god. Yeah. Whoa. Oh, that was a bird. No, I did it twice last night. I like those um, Keebler Coconut Dreams, which is basically the uh, Samoas from Girl Scouts. It was a Girl Scout too, by the way. It was never a brownie. Junior, cadet, senior. You're a Girl Scout. Yeah, those are the levels. Brownie. Were you a Girl Scout in high school? Junior. Yeah. That's real dorky, isn't it? But I think my last year was like ninth grade. And I got my silver award. I never got the gold award, which is like the highest honors you can get in Girl Scouts. The silver award and the gold award. I was not a Boy Scout. There was no Boy Scouts in your town. Yes, there were. Just football. That was not in high school. I, I was in high school. My dad made us work around the house. My dad GC'd his own house. And then after we moved in, he had to do all the yard and bring all kinds of fill and landscaping. So we literally bought a dump truck and a backhoe and we trucked the dirt in and then we had to do the driveway and, and all the bricks. And it just took years and years and my slave labor. I mixed a lot of concrete and carried a lot of bricks. Your slave labor? I think he did a lot of work, no? He did a lot of work, yeah, but you know, I, carried, I also did a lot of bricks and carried a lot of bricks and mixed a lot of cement in the middle school and he had a business hauling firewood. Now I've loaded, I've loaded more trucks full of firewood than you would care to know. I don't know, it sounds like he had businesses and everything. He did. Firewood, hunting dogs, trailers, tractors. He did, he always had a side gig. Let me tell you kids, there's a common thing these days with these millennials and what's the other thing, the Gen Zers mostly. You old people tell me this is accurate. These Gen Zers run around acting like with these memes, they'd be like, oh, I used to be able to have, oh, in the in the 60s and 70s and 80s or whatever, you, you know, you, the husband worked and the wife stayed at home and, and you, you could live on one income and everything was just peachy keen. No, <laughs> that's not how it was. Maybe that's how it was in 1950, but I don't even think so. Anyway, I was born, I lived, I mean, I was a kid in the 70s. I was born in 1968, 67, almost 68. My father was a police officer and my mother was a teacher in Long Island. So they had the very best union jobs and made just as much money as anybody else around at that point. And my dad always had side gigs. And my mother might have took a little bit of time off work, like maternity leave, but she went right back to work. And again, my father had side gigs delivering firewood and cutting down trees and always something, always hustling, always hustling. And we didn't have to live like, I was middle class, man. Upper, maybe upper middle class, but. Again, a law enforcement and a teacher. Oh. So it's a myth. It's a myth in the 70s if the father worked and, and the mother just stayed home and, and everyone lived on one income. Stop complaining, Gen Zers. I mean, school and houses are disproportional to income nowadays. I'll, I'll tell you that, but don't act like we're in hustling. I do agree that the cost of college education, the cost of a house is disproportionately much higher now to where your income used to be back then. All right, guys, check it out. I was just casting a bait out into the uh, bridge here, and I cast it into an eddy, basically where the Ripley water meets the calm water, where it's ripping around a point. And I was just talking to Brian about Big Jacks. I'm like, where are the Big Jacks at? And we just had a nice bite on that mullet that this fish ate. <laughs> He's actually not as big as I thought he was gonna be. That's a big bait I was just fishing. Yeah. But that's a beautiful Jack Craval. Look at that. That looks like an old injury. His gill plate is totally ripped right there, but he seems to be doing okay. And that wasn't me. That was, he was cooked in the lip. Nice. It goes to show you how hardy these fish are. Yeah. But first, biggest, nicest fish on the boat so far. I'm gonna let this fish go, just cause it's like this injury. I don't know. It's a tough yeah. fish. Let's let him go. Basically, I'm keeping his head into the current. Don't want to put your hands in the mouth of a jack. That's for sure. All right, let's see. There it goes. Nice. All right, cool. Let's get another fish. All right, we finally got a fish on. We're so desperate, we're going to chase it like it's an actual fish. Hey, man, you never know. He's off. Get you that jack up. You never know what it could be. 
It's a catfish. Catfish wrapped me on the pole? Are you kidding me right now? You suck at fishing. I literally suck at fishing. I'm the worst ever. We should quit, fi I quit fishing. At least you have a nice butt. It's the title, I quit fishing. Time to change my jig. I'm constantly changing my hook all day long based on the current and the tide and what's going on. But you have to stay diligent and diligent, like Brian always says. And I literally have changed my jig like, I don't even know, five times. You're supposed to, good for you. Based on the depth and everything. I know, I'm just telling them. Here's what I'm doing. I'm just doing heavy on the bottom. And I'm doing more of a drift. It's because I'm lazy. Two rods. Yeah. Twice the opportunity to screw something up. No. Twice the opportunity to catch something. I better turn the camera on. It's a black drum. No. Baby, it's a black drum. Get the f***ing net. Oh my god. I'm trying to bring it down. Come on. I knew it felt weird. I told you that was a fish I just hooked. I wasn't being stupid. Saving the day right now, guys. Let I have the rod down as this guy as this boat came by. Jesus. Oh my god, we gotta wait. Boom! What? <laughs> you did it! <laughs> Get a line right back out. You gotta get it right back out. When there's one, there's more. I can't even talk right now. We gotta get them in the well. Unincredible. Once again, super dark fish. Hooked ends perfectly. No oh, shush with you. I was telling you it was a real fish I was getting a bite on. You were saying that all day and though. In, and in that hole over there, it, it kind of did the same thing. All right, gotta get him in the sun. I show him in the sun a little bit, but whatever. Look at that beautiful fish. Definitely a keeper. Probably 14 inches. Look how pretty. No way. Once again, we get another Lake Worth Lagoon black drum. Brian's just been neg negative all day. We've been putting in this time and effort, and it's finally paying off, guys, because you know what? You just gotta keep fishing. You gotta keep lines in the water. And I was fishing two rods, now he's fishing three rods. <laughs> so I don't know what's going on, but. Oh, I got you another, catch me another <laughs> Let's one. Let's go get Try another go home. I'm done talking. My shrimp got all crushed in that hole over there. I don't know what that means. When I, that fish was swimming with the thing in his mouth, and I wonder if that was drum over there. <laughs> I'm serious. Yeah, I gotta admit. Right there. Hundred feet that way. Language. Yeah, I gotta admit, dude. I was like sitting around. I was like, I'm quitting. Yes. I'm about to get on my phone. I was like really having a hard time out here. It's been slow. Very it happens. Very slow. We're happy about a black drum, that's for sure. Oh yeah, it's delicious and whatever. Very delicious. We don't get to catch them too often here, and uh, it's just exciting when you catch one. Yeah, I know a lot of you guys don't think it's a big deal. You guys big black drums all the time, but here in Boynton... You got my line. Uh, here in Boynton, no one catches black drums, so I gotta tell you that. Except me. Except Darcy and Captain Pat. And Captain Pat don't tell nobody. <laughs> You think he catches them regularly? I don't know. I think probably lately you've been catching them more than him. But uh, I mean, it's a big deal for us. It's a different fish. I mean, you can come out here and catch snook all the time, but yeah, we try not to, you know, catch the same darn fish. So something, catching something different like that in this crummy fishery is pretty good. Camera's not on. Getting fish fights after fish fights. Darcy got a moonfish. Check it out. Got a beautiful moonfish. I can't see that. On that's the sun, wrong side of the sun. Angle of that sun is horrible. Let me get it. Yes, it is. Let's get that right out. Ate it right away when I casted it out too. That was cool. And then my line went slack and I went to reel and he was like very close to the boat, hanging out. It's a very thin fish. Like the thinnest fish, thinnest fish in the world. They're pretty delicious if you get a bunch of them. That one is kind of marginal size if you can get a fillet off of it, but. Yeah, they gotta be like a little bigger. I mean, definitely yeah. would feed us, but. If you got like 10 of them. Yes. A bigger one, they, got, they actually have some meat on them. You're gonna get more meat of that than a crappie, so you guys can say you can't all day, but all right, back to fishing. Beautiful fish, another species. All right, guys, just checked out this black drum. He is a keeper. They have to be 14 to 24 inches in my area in order to keep. This guy was just over 18 inches long. So what we do is, in order to bleed them, I'm gonna leave them in the well and bleed them out and then put them in the cooler. But these gill plates are what I wanna rip. Uh, so what I'm going to do, it's really hard to rip by hand with a black drum, I don't know why. So what I use is a knife, but I literally just go in there and you just want to cut those gill plates. And that's how we make his meat extra delicious. And I've been bleeding a lot of my fish lately, both inshore and offshore fish. All right, so that's how we do it. Woo, oh and now he's a bloody mess. But you guys get the point. Woo, all right, so you see that? <laughs> He'll be done here in about 30 seconds. 
Ready to clean some fish to a sizzle? Do it. <laughs> sharp tools, sharp knife, blank fish quickly. We're ready. Whew, back at the house, as you can see, guys. We are. <laughs> it's the next day, obviously, because we got home <laughs> in the dark. Yes, in the dark, as we said. <laughs> yeah. But we've really been fishing the tide lately. Really working. Yeah, it definitely works. Like, we love the outgoing tide for inshore fishing. Probably, as we said in the video, um, we don't really pay attention offshore. We want to catch that bait in the morning. Right. All right. But, uh, We're ready here. Let's go. This is really a great catch by Darcy. I know a lot of you guys catch black, big, fat, huge black drums all over the place. But down here in Boynton, I don't even know if anyone else catches them besides Darcy, frankly. Caught quite a few this year now. Yeah. This is like, I mean, we never caught them in the past. So the year 2023 is the year of the black drum down here, I guess. But uh, I don't consider myself an expert by any means. But slowly but surely, we're learning new areas, new spots, how to catch them, all that good stuff. So it's pretty cool. You got like a big leaf on your visor. All right, let me go get my fish. All right. Okay, first things first, <laughs> clean the knife. They will yell at you. Yeah, they whoa, whoa. Jesus! <laughs> what the freak? How did he just fall? No. Those damn tree rats. Darn. He just fall right there? Yes, right there. He was on that thing and I guess it fell. Like, you see that branch right there? <laughs> Weirdest stuff happens over That's here. That's in a blooper reel. I swear to God. <laughs> I thought something was, that was about to fall on my head. Jeez. Freaking squirrels. Pick up that thing, Joey, how big it I'm is. I'm so mad at the squirrels right now. What? So you don't pick up that big branch that fell. Yeah. Yeah, he was standing on that, I guess, or something. Loser. He fell with it. <laughs> so mad at the squirrels right now. It's about to be mango season here. We've got loads it is mango of mangoes. Season. Well, ours are about to drop, but they're going to be in my tree eating them all. All right, here we go. We're going to flay up this beautiful puppy black drum. And again, I think the slot size, like um, 14 to 24 inches is really like the perfect size to keep these fish. And I think they're really tasty at this size. So I'm excited. Let's do this. Let's talk about worms. Cause anything I want to talk about is worms on these fish. Uh, for me, I mean, I've have never seen one worm in, a, worm in a black drum, but again, I have not caught that many black drums in my life. We've caught quite a few this season of the year 2023. None of them have had a worm, none, not one. And it might be because they're puppy black drums and they, they're just not old enough yet to accumulate the worms or for me maybe to see them in the meat. But um, yeah, there's no worms in these guys. So I'll just show you here in just one second. And want to quickly mention my small business. If you guys want to support me, head over to my website, darsizzleoffshore.com. We got a couple dozen or two or three different, two or three dozen different nautical pendants, including this beautiful shark. They're all unisex pendants, solid ster sterling silver, 925, as well as, well as fish hook and anchor bracelets. This one's even st solid sterling silver. So again, they're all adult sizes. One size fits all basically. I make child size bracelets too. We got decals, apparel, all kinds of great stuff. So I'd highly appreciate it if you guys check out my small business and I'll link that down below. All right, almost done with this fish. That's very quick, but you see how a sharp knife makes quick work of a fish. And just like anything, I constantly keep the edge sharp on this blade. So that's what I was doing with my tri-home knife sharpener from Smith. But look at this meat. Bled the fish right before I put them in the fish box. And that meat is gorgeous. Look at that. I don't see any worms. No worms on this guy. This is going to be absolutely amazing. They would be like right here. That's not a worm. Don't worry. That's like part of his guts. You sure? Yeah. <laughs> I opened it up by accident. Right okay. There. You can see it's covered there. Yeah. The worms would be right in here. Yeah. I mean, in the Amber Jackson stuff, you see it in the tail meat and you see it like going through the body right in here, but there is no worms in this guy. All right. So same exact thing, just like any other fish. We're gonna go ahead and just outline the bones. That's what I like to do on the thicker skinned fish, like a black drum. That's pretty good. And then the same exact knife. And we're gonna go ahead and skin it, just like we do most of our fish. No reason to scale it if we're gonna skin it. There you go. All right, there we go. And that little piece of meat that we cut right here is gone. And that is ready to eat. That looks amazing. I'm not even gonna worry about that little bit of blood, that red blood line. That's not much to worry about at all. Yep. But look how snow white that is. Absolutely gorgeous. Not a single piece of worms, all right? No. So uh, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and finish up the other side of this fish. And then let me get inside the house for the cooking with pudding portion of this video. 
Whew. All right, guys, welcome to another edition of Cooking with Puddin. This is the Mother's Day edition. Nice. It's going to be way past Mother's Day for you guys, and it's almost Mother's Day for us, but we are taking out my aunt for Mother's Day tonight, so I had to make this kind of quick and dirty. But anyway, like, we get, I've been getting comments on Facebook, or we've been getting comments on Facebook that people, like, don't eat these drums, like I mentioned outside. They've just been giving them back because of the worms. Don't be scared of the worms. This is a delicious yeah. fish. Very similar to redfish, okay? You can cook it uh, on the barbecue, but if you keep it on the half shell, which means you keep the skin and the scales on, put it right on there uh, with butter and tomato or other sort of lemons or limes. Uh, do you have, did you have that lemon? No, you said you didn't Grab the lemon, we're gonna spritz it on there. Okay. Okay, so what I did though, again, because we're going out to dinner in like three hours with my aunt, I just put it in a pan. I'm also on a diet, this is super easy. A little butter, uh, a splash of oil to keep it nice and, um, Thank you, Sizzle. To keep the butter from burning, really, because the oil helps uh, make the temperature, make the boiling temperature or the burning temperature higher, right? Sprinkle a little lemon on there. Anyway, just butter, salt and pepper, throw it on the grill there or on the pan. Three minutes on one side, and you can notice the edges get a little white, like I always tell you. Flip it over, then you're gonna poke it with a fork. We don't overcook fish around here. If you wanna put some lemon on at the end for an acid after you cook it or whatever, that's the deal. Wash it down with Dark Sizzle's favorite beer. The lamb talk. <laughs> and you're all set. Sorry, I'm like zoning out over here. I'm a little tired. We went fishing. You guys can't wait for this video. It's going to be our best video of the month. Besides this one, uh, we went to Key Largo, trailed our boat all the way down there, and we destroyed it. So we're also a little tired today. We slept 11 hours last night. After not sleeping for like 36 hours. Yeah, because we don't sleep very well before we fish. We're so excited. No. Mm. Well, absolutely delicious. I even threw some garlic on there. Mm -hmm. How is the sizzle? Super yummy. Just like excellent. Like super it's moist one of the and best delicious fish. and it's, it's really good. I, it's, it's, I mean, I don't want to say it's grouper, but it's starting to get, it's, a, it's not like, mm -hmm. like it's better than mahi and yellowtail mm -hmm. snapper because mm -hmm. it's a little bit firmer. Mm -hmm. So mm. you you who's are throwing it out because there's worms in it. I mean, it's ridiculous. And like I said, I think those smaller fish that are in that slot range, or maybe even under 20, is a perfect eating size. Yeah, really. you can cut around the worms, no big deal. Yeah. yeah. All right. All right, guys, that's about it. We're gonna finish this up. <laughs> yeah. And we got a lot to do. So, um, thanks for watching this episode. Stay tuned for more epic content. And until our next adventure, follow, follow your, your dreams, dreams and keep, keep on, on catching. catching. Cheers. Boom.